Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, I wanted to talk about another Hypershade node that has been requested, and it is called the Gamma Correct Utility Node. Let's go into the Hypershade. Here in the Hypershade, you see I have a docked viewport so that I have a window into my scene. So over here in the Create area, if I click on Utilities, you can see here I have Gamma Correct in our list of utilities. Let me left click on that to make it, and we can zoom in and take a look at it. So here we have an input for a value. If I click on this, you see the value says value XYZ. That could also mean RGB. It is a vector value, therefore it means it needs three numbers, X, Y, and Z, or R, G, and B. And then the out value, X, Y, and Z also, or also RGB. So input and then output. You can see here in the property editor, that the value has a color box that we can pick from and then the gamma correction numbers here that we can choose and we can apply gamma correction to the color that we pick or if a texture is feeding into this we can apply gamma correction to the whole texture. So let's demonstrate that a little bit. Let me go ahead and create a new material. I'm going to click on the surface category and I'll choose a blend. So here's my blend material. Go ahead and create a polygon sphere to apply this to. Middle mouse click and drag the blend onto the sphere to apply it. I'll press the 6 key to turn on texture view and scale my sphere up a little bit so we can see it better. So, there's a couple different ways of using the Gamma Correct node. First of all, let me go ahead and apply a texture to the blend material. So I'm going to click on the little black and white checkerboard next to color and from the Create Render Node window that opens, I'm going to click on File, which will apply a file texture to the color of the blend. And when I click on the File node now, I can click on this little yellow uh, folder to browse to a texture to use for this material. And I'll do that now. Okay, so you can see here I applied a brick texture to our sphere. I'll hide the grid for now so you can just see the sphere by itself. So the file texture is being applied to the color of the blend. So one thing I could do is with the gamma correct node, I can click on the out value and apply it to, for example, the ambient color. So once I've done that, I can use the gamma correct node and mess with these three numbers to adjust the gamma of the ambient color attribute of the material. So these three numbers represent R or red, G or green, and B or blue. So if G was 0 and B was 0 for example and if we increase this value up to white you'll notice that our brick turns a very beet red color even though we're using white here because the gamma correction has increased the R or red value of the white that we're applying to the ambient color. We can adjust these numbers differently for example if this was 0.5 here and we could say this is 0.5 if all three numbers are 0.5, the color it will become white. We, if we chose a color to use here, so we're now we're using a base color of red, I can then say take the gamma red down to zero, and now we've bled the red out of that color. We're left with the kind of a turquoise with the blue and green that's remaining. So as I take this, this color back up to white, and I have my gamma as 0, 0, 0, as I type in, say, 1 for red, you can see the brick turns a beet red. Take it back to zero and change this green up to one. You can see it turns bright green. And same for blue. So that's one way you can use gamma correction is to apply the out value to an attribute of your material and control that attribute simply with the colors. Now another way to do this, another way of using this, is to control the gamma of a texture. So instead of having the texture go straight from the texture to the material, I can instead use the gamma correct node as a go-between. I can say out color of the brick texture into the value of the gamma correct and then the out value of the gamma correct to the color of the material. Now right now I have my gamma correction numbers as being 0, 0, 0. If I make these 1, 1, 1, you can see my brick is back to normal. But I can, like you saw briefly when I was putting in these numbers, I can tint the gamma of those values and if I keep the numbers the same, keeping the numbers the same will actually 
increase or decrease the darkness or the the gamma as you might no normally think of it uh, for the whole texture instead of one color at a time. So a gamma say of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 it dims my brick texture a bit. If I go back up to 111 it's now back to the way it was to begin with. And then 000 makes it all just black. And if you chose different numbers you can see here I have it now a more of a red tint. I can add in a little bit of the other colors to get it. It's still a red tint, but not quite as saturated. So that's what's happening here. You're adjusting the gamma values on an RGB basis of this texture that's plugged into the value of the gamma correct node. And then the out value of that is going into the color. So again, gamma correction, typically you would keep all three numbers the same so that you're, you're controlling the gamma as a whole as opposed to just different colors but you can tint the colors in that way using different numbers in, in the RGB values. I'm going to get rid of that specular highlight so it's a little bit easier to see the brick that we're working with. So again to kind of recap that we've applied the texture into the value of the gamma correct node then the out value is going into the color in this case it can go into other attributes of course and then you can adjust the gamma of the texture with these three numbers and these three numbers again represent RGB or red green blue so adjusting them evenly so they're all the same number you're adjusting the overall brightness or overall gamma you're adjusting the overall gamma of the texture but again you can tint the color by adjusting these numbers unevenly like this for example and get it more of a, a bluish tint to the texture this is one way, just looking at it now, you can kind of see, like, if you can imagine, this was a brick texture that you're using in a night scene, for example. Your gamma correction node could help you tint the textures to kind of sell the fact that this is now a night scene. We get a bit of a blue tint to everything, uh, that kind of thing. Instead of having to make, like, for example, a new texture, you can just simply use this to correct it. Get the the gamma correct node also comes into play when dealing with working in a linear workflow. I do recommend looking on YouTube for linear workflow uh, tutorials. There's so many of them out there I don't want to necessarily go through it again. I feel like I couldn't really tell you any information that's new or different than what's already out there. So definitely recommend looking up linear workflow in Maya, those words, on YouTube and you can find some really nice resources talking about linear workflow and it does go into the gamma correct node and how to use it in that way. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool, uh, useful node for not just working in a linear workflow that you can find about find out about on YouTube, like I said, but also you can use it for tinting or they're otherwise controlling the gamma of textures and different attributes of your materials without having to create you know, multiple different versions of your brick texture, for example. In any case, I hope you found this video useful in learning about the Gamma Correct utility node. It's a very, it's a very handy utility. I definitely recommend looking into it. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.